Hey guys, it's Patty with Studio 12 Stencils. Today I'm gonna to show you how to do some beachy stuff. I'm gonna show you how to make a great rustic background for your beach signs. Um, we're going to show you cool stuff with command strips. I'm gonna show you multi-part stencils, how to use brushes to highlight, how to, all the things. Like, you guys are gonna have so much fun. Hi guys, it's Patty with Studio R12 Stencils and today I'm going to show you how to do a really beachy kind of background effect that is gonna be perfect for your summer signs. And I am going to show you how to use command strips. And I'm gonna show you at the end of the video how to cheat and make them go twice as far and how to mount them successfully easily the very first time. So you're gonna to wanna to stick around for that. We have prizes today, thank you for joining us. Um, we have set of brushes, these are dome brushes. These are the green handled dome brushes. Um, it is a set of six, that's a one, two, three, four, five, six, yes, six. And we are doing a grand prize of a shopping spree. And we'll do that today at noon, and then this evening at 9 p.m. for our recast, okay? And remember that we're answering questions live. That's what this live is for us, is we are answering your questions live. Um, and that means you can ask, ask away, ask whatever you want. And we are here to answer your painting questions. Okay, then put those away and remember to like and share and comment to be entered to win for the drawings, okay? And then I wanna talk about these signs that we have on the back. They are our beachy signs and I've got, um, I always like to show painted things, um, things that are not the project. So over here we have a personalized sign. I'm gonna just sneak over right there. It has the Hodges family and that is P-R-S-T, stands for personalized stencil, um, 0008, that's that one. And then over on this one, this is um, the wrong one, beach house sign. And this has got all the beachy words that you would ever want to have. And it just makes a really nice collage for um, a house sign. It's STCL 1309. And then this one over here, I think you can see it is our grateful, thankful, blessed with a mandala in the background. Don't forget you can layer your stencils. So we've got a mandala in the background, really tone on tone, and then we've done the grateful, thankful, and blessed in different colors. So, and those stencils are STCL 1803, and that's the word stencil, and STCL 2529. So that's my housekeeping. I hope you guys like those. Which is your favorite? Um, be be sharing with us with what you like and what you yeah, think about what we're doing. Okay, we're gonna start with a water-based stain. Um, there are affiliate links in the bottom of our description. We have to tell you that. Um, we don't wanna carry this medium because they come in giant jars. They're hard for us to ship and stuff like that. Small company, you get it. So um, this is a water-based, um, I think this is a Minwax, but you have to get those mixed. So any water-based medium color, it will do. Um, Make sure you shake it up. And then these are honey bottles and there will be a link below for that too. And these are just nice for transferring in from bigger containers into smaller usable um, for filming and stuff like that. So we're gonna use our water-based stain. This is an MDF board. It is the size of the stencil I'm gonna use. Um, if you're not, then that's fine. But um, MDF is weird because it doesn't suck stuff up. So you're just gonna surface coat that and it'll be kind of transparent. If you don't have a water-based stain, then go ahead and mix water in with a brown, that's this color, and that will make a water-based transparent paint, um, which is what they use for like staining um, decks and stuff like that. They just use an acrylic that they make thinner. So we're gonna get that coated. Okay, tell us where you're from. Tell us what your weather is today. We have been having on and off weather because it's Ohio. That's what we have. Okay, and if you notice, when we're on our edges of our board right here, um, when I'm painting, I either have to be really, really careful not to scoop. Watch what happens if I scoop over the edge. Scoop, and then you get a big old blob right there, and then it makes it so you have to go through and you have to fix all of the edges of the whole sign. Um, so what I do, 
and we wipe that up. Hang on. I made a big old blob. Okay, we wipe that up. What you do is you sweep off the edge instead of scooping towards. Sweeping makes it not get so messy. Okay. All right, I'm gonna get it all coated. I'm gonna turn the blow dryer on in a hot second, so that'd be a really good time to tell us what's on your painting table. And how many of you are ready for beach time? Like, put your hand up in the chat, I'm so there. Need a vacation like nobody's business is what I need. Okay. Get that on there. My brush, this is a poly foam brush. These we do carry. Um, they're the best little foam brushes. Um, you know my stance on these. I don't, I didn't know I would love foam brushes, but I do. So, um, but in order to make them last, you wanna sink them in water and then just get them saturated so they kind of stay down in there. If they float without being saturated, the paint dries, the brush gets ruined. So, but they should last you a good 20, 20 or more if you're really good to them. Don't use soap with them. Okay, I'm gonna turn my blow dryer on. And gonna need to plug that in. So, hang on, technical difficulties. Get this. Thank you, Steve. Okay, so that's almost dry. A little teeny bit tacky is not gonna be too big a worry um, because I'm gonna be doing some mixing of paint. So we've got this distressed background. And what you'll notice with this distressed background is you can see your background through it. So you wanna make sure that you leave some of that. And if you cover it all up, it's okay because I can show you some tricks for that. And so I think that's um, one of the magical things about these videos is that we show you how to fix the things at the same time as how to um, just create beautiful things and how to layer things and all, all, this, all this stuff, all the things. So we're gonna mix a sandy color, see the beach is the theme today, and a white, and I'm gonna use another foam brush. I'm going to, I have another foam brush out, move that. I'm just gonna mix a little bit of both colors in my brush. And then we're going to just streak that on there. I'm using such a feather touch. I'm not, I'm kind of just supporting the brush. I'm not really pushing. Okay, and you can do this in layers. You could choose to do white and then do the sandy color over the top. So it's your choice. And then know that paint is your friend. So if you make a mistake, go backwards one step and fix it. So if I made a mistake with this color, say I didn't like this area right here, um, and I thought it was really kind of just, mm, I covered it up too much, I can go backwards one step and I could streak in some of the brown. Okay, so you can always go back and forth with your paints. All right. So we're going to continue streaking. This sign, when you see it, I haven't shared it yet because I want you to kind of be surprised. It's kind of fun. It is very, very, very lighthearted and perfect for summer and beaching and all of the things. How many of you say all the things? Because that's like a thing. Okay. Get that streaked. And we can decide how much we want, um, whether or not we think that's enough, whether or not we think that we're too much. We can pick up more paint. The other thing that we can do, if you want to um, move around on it, if you were to have a um, sanding disc, this is one of our um, Amazon affiliate links. This is something I can't source, but we put the coarse sandpaper in there. It's a 60 grit sandpaper. And then if you, you can go right through the wet, um, the wet paint and that'll give you streaks. And then one thing to be very cautious of, 
You want to go straight with the grain that you're painting in because if you, if you, I kind of did that here. If you kind of a little bit, it messes up everything. So how do you fix that? You can go right back into your brush and you can streak to erase it. Paint is your best eraser. Okay, and then I've got that there and then maybe I want to have some more sanding. Now I'll go straight and there it fixes it. So everything can be fixed. That's the beautiful thing about craft painting and stencil painting, hi little bug, um, is everything can be fixed. All right, so that's a little bit darker look and then this one is a little bit lighter. So, but both of them are perfectly acceptable. So it just depends on where you wanna stop and you could go even more light. You could touch a little gray in that with that. So there's a lot of places you can go with this. I'm gonna put this off to the side. Okay, how many of you wear your paint? You can put your hand up, you can say me. I'm really good about painting me. Okay, next we're gonna go with our stencil. And this is, this is the fun part. Okay, so swim at your own risk, lifeguard on, break. Okay, I thought I was gonna say duty and I was like, wait, that's not it. So what's fun about this stencil is this is a two-part stencil. So you can personalize what you put right here on our website on studior12.com. And if you go to studior12.com and you, um, you, when you come to the homepage, there's gonna be a big spinning wheel that you can, like um, you spin the wheel and it gives you discounts. It's a surprise discount. It just does it randomly like Vegas or something, but it's fun to do and you'll get a discount. So that's a neat little thing, I'll betcha you didn't know. Okay, so we're gonna go, this one says, the lifeguard is on drink break. You can choose your different ones. I, you might even be able to, I can't remember if you can choose your own. Um, wine break, you can choose your own. Carrie's telling me yes. And beer break. So you can fit the word that you wanna put in there, nothing too long, obviously, but, um, I love our personalized stuff because it's so much fun to be able to make it like yours. Okay, um, swim at your own risk, I love it. Um, I have a pool at my house so you know where this site's going, right? Now, I wanted to address something. We were talking about command strips, but you can't command strip at a pool. Like, it would be hard to do that outside your house. Like, I, I think you could, it depends on, you know, your siding and stuff. But one thing that you'll notice back here on the wall is we've got holes in some of these signs and we mostly don't sell our signs with holes. We let you decide if you're gonna need a hole. So it's just a drill and a drill bit. Um, but so we've hung these with rope in different places and stuff like that. So if you need to hang it by a rope because it's gonna go on your fence by your pool um, or you know on a, a, a cement um, screw or something like that, then you can just add rope. And this would look super cool with some of this like more rustic twine, I think, look awesome. Okay, so we're gonna put this stencil on top. And then for those of you who are joining us for the first time, and maybe there's some of you who bleed under your stencils, um, I'm gonna show you how not to do that because that's the number one, looking for tape, here we go. The number one thing that people complain about is that stencils are hard because you bleed under them. Well, you don't have to bleed under them. And I will tell you a little secret, I still do bleed under my stencils and I'll tell you when I do that. It's when I'm going fast and when I'm um, not being careful, when I don't pay attention to what I'm doing, then get a little cocky, get a little arrogant, and then there goes right under the stencil. Okay, I'm gonna tape on both sides. The reason we tape on both sides, I say this like every single video, but I think it's really important, is this flexes quite a bit when you only tape on one side. So I'll get it straightened back out, tape on the other side. At least this time I didn't put the tape down first. All right, and now if I grab a hold of my stencil, I can't, I can't wiggle it at all. So that is amazing. Um, all right, let's get our palette paper. Looking at my example. We're gonna go with this most obnoxious green paint this is what's fun about summer painting is your palette is so different than other times of the year. And when you're gonna put this outside, if you're not into maybe the spread of decor, um, it's fun to play in these colors. Don't you just love color? 
I do, I love, love, love it. Okay, beginners, here we go. We've got our dome brush. We have a flat paper towel. This is a double thickness of paper towel folded in fours. This is a dome brush. Dome brushes are dome, hello. Um, everybody can say duh. Um, dome brushes are dome, but the flat brushes push the paint underneath your stencil when you stipple like this. Notice that when I stipple like that, it does not push under. Flat ones absolutely do. So these are great because they're not gonna automatically shove underneath. We're gonna just load just a teeny bit of paint on the tip, okay? And then we're gonna go onto our paper towel. We're gonna swirl, swirl, swirl like 10 times in the same spot and then like three off of it. Okay, and then what that should do for us, if I'm thinking every now and again, you're gonna lose these little hairs, that they're glued in the ferrule. So just so that you know this and you don't panic, I, I like to you know, be transparent here. Um, they, they put a water, they get it cut, and I, they contain it somehow, but they dip it in glue. Well, sometimes not every hair gets glued, so you just need to know that. Um, and then just brush them off when you're done. Um, actually, on my sample, there were some that were dried on there. And um, I just took the sanding disc, the sanding block, and just sanded them right off. Okay, so we are going to do the swim at your own risk in this blue. I'm not going to show you every single letter because we've got them already done over here. So we're going to swirl. My pressure is really light, and I'm whispering so that you believe me. Okay, we're not going to shove and push on it. We're just going to tickle it, just ever so soft. Okay, and as we get closer to the, I have a new tool, I'm not sure. I will get it and I will, is it in here somewhere? Hang on a second. They're trying to help me. Somebody <laughs> tell me where it is. <laughs> Top shelf? I've got everything tiled up. All right, we're, we're gonna get this. There it is. Okay, this is, oh my goodness. This is, it looks like somebody has a nose and is laughing, okay? But this is a masker. So what's neat about this is, I've got my glasses over here. We can take, when we're getting close to other things, you can hold it next to the thing that you're close to and then just walk it along and it masks the colors so that you don't make a mess on your other area. Okay, and then what's neat about this, this is brand new little guy. It's got pointy areas. Um, this came about when I was trying to paint some leaves and some vines and it was taping them. I was getting mad. So I kind of threw my brush down and went and saw one of my designers. This has got a ruler down here. It's got these um, dots and circles so that you can make little patterns on things. You can make a checkerboard. Um, border in that. And then these other areas are just because areas are sometimes weird to mask. And it even has a little corner tool that I don't know what that means, but Dustin explained it to me and I don't remember. <laughs> um, and then um, it's got metrics on this side. So inches down here and metrics on that side. Very, very functional. So it's the multi-masker. All right, so we will continue with that. And come on, so my brush has still got enough paint to go. <clears throat> For you beginners, notice that as I'm swirling, um, I am not <clears throat> going slow, I'm not hurrying, but I'm just able to move pretty quickly. Excuse me, my goodness. We do have the tumblers <clears throat> available on the website and they come in all the colors under the rainbow. <clears throat> Speaking of colors, <coughs> my goodness. <clears throat> well, <coughs> Pardon me. Okay. All right, so notice that we're not going super slow or super fast, but we're moving pretty quickly through our letters. That's what's beautiful about <clears throat> that's what's beautiful about swirling. So a lot of people know that you stipple <clears throat> when you stencil. So you go up and down, up and down like this. Now what you notice with this is it really does cover really well. The problem is, is it's wet for a really long time. So <clears throat> this is dry. This is all completely dry and it takes seconds to dry. So I really, really like to swirl. 
And I like the, um, it doesn't do a fatigue thing on my shoulder and my arm. <clears throat> when I'm doing, when I'm stippling, I tend to really like do some force with it. I don't know if that's just me or if it's, do you guys do that too? Um, but I feel like a swirling is just a much more natural move. So now by the time we get down to the end, we're all dry. We can just go right back and start it again. Okay. <clears throat> and then you can change your colors. So, um, you know, different parts of this. We've got this, <clears throat> this part right here done in a blue. And then this one is in a red. I'm gonna show you the red because red can be a funky little beast to deal with. Okay, so we get that done. <clears throat> All right, and we're gonna get a red. Red on this color background um, is not horrific. Red on some backgrounds is really hard to cover with. So what you'll do with the reds is you might undercoat them with a gray. Gray is just a, like a nice middle neutral color. And so we get that. <clears throat> and then we pick up our paint the same way. Those of you that are beginners, it's the same exact thing that we were doing. So any color that you use is gonna be the same. Um, one thing I didn't say, if you're new to stenciling, is that <clears throat> you can, you have to use a dry brush. If you use a wet brush, you will puddle underneath your stencil. If you use wet paint, if I just like slopped that up and smooshed that down, um, it would bleed right under that. So don't use a lot of paint. Dry off on the, it seems like you're wasting paint, but there's not another way to do it and have a successful um, painting session. So I could get a new piece of paper towel. You can fold these and all of that. Be careful of putting your paper towel on top of your board when you're painting because sometimes you can forget and like flip it over and then that paint is still wet for quite a while because we've wiped off a big bunch of it and then you can make a big mess on your project. So you wanna be careful of that. All right, now we're gonna go into glasses. So I can see just well enough to be dangerous but then I need my glasses. Okay, so see how transparent the red is when we put it down the first time. <clears throat> One thing about swirling is you can really, like I showed you over here, is you can really give a different effect. If I want it to be really soft and dreamy, like so let's be a peeker and let's take a peek. Okay, so if I wanted it to be just like it was faded and it was some sort of like, I don't know, distressed look, then I could totally leave that soft like that. Whereas if I, if I stipple, if I stipple, I don't have any choice. If I stippled light, I'd end up with something that looked like, I don't know, snowy red, you know, like it was like textury pebbly red. So now you can see the difference between the two of those. This is great, but I have no control. This is dries quickly. Um, I have all the control. I can do four layers if I want to. I can do one layer. I can do a layer and a half, you know, whatever. Okay, I'll we'll get that line back up. Retape. All right, <clears throat> so I'll go back over this other. And you'll see it'll take like some coats. So I'm gonna lay my brush inside my paper towels just to keep the air and the wind and stuff like that from getting on it. I'm gonna go up to these letters right here. I'm gonna show you how to do a highlight through the middle. This is a super fun way to make a sign just a little bit different. So you can take your greeny color. Oh, I have everything out that I need. So you can take your green color and you can pick up a little bit of white, maybe a little bit more and then off on the paper towel. I think a good estimate for how many brushes you need if you're gonna paint projects with multiple colors. If you're just painting um, single color, like black background, white letters, one brush will do. Um, but if you're gonna paint anything with multiple colors in one session, then I'd say about 25 brushes is a good number. Um, thank goodness they're super cheap. All right, to get the highlight through the middle of the letters, what we're gonna do, we've lightened our paint with white, 
And then we're just going to swirl with a little bit more white. That's not light enough for me. We're going to swirl right on through the middle of our letters. When you have letters that have things that wiggle or move, you want to just be careful of um, making them slide out of the way so it messes with your effect. Then I'm going to pick up a little bit more white, and then I'm just going to streak, I guess. I want it in the middle of the highlight I just did. Okay, so that is that highlight effect. Isn't that cool? You can make it darker, stronger. Let's go one more for an even brighter look. And we'll just... Ooh, let me show you how to do this manually. I think this is a really interesting thing to do. Um, if you take a round brush, we've got these on the website, um, and you want to do a highlight through the middle. And don't... So this is neat. Um, if you... Stay... If you don't want to buy a million dome brushes and you want to buy a couple of good or you have some good um, round brushes, you can use these wet. You can wash them and reuse them right away. So you're going to pick up some of your green and some white. Okay. And then just kind of blot that on the paper towel. And then, oh, I guess I could, no, I don't want to do it through the stencil. So then what you can do is you can just put your lines across and that is going to give you your highlight. The reason I didn't want to put my stencil back, I had to remind myself why not, is because if you catch paint that has liquid underneath the edge of your stencil, then you're going to bleed under. Okay, so I can just go there and I can highlight and pick it up a little bit more. So there's more than one way to do this. And then if I wanted to, I could go back over to my swim. I could use, hey, this is a cool idea spontaneously having good ideas here. All right, we take a stencil brush, we get into our white. I could take my little dot and I could make this letter be polka dotty. Super fun. Isn't that neat? So you've got that right on, right on board. That's cute. I love that, that looks way more swimmerly. Okay, so, but you can use your um, round brush to re-highlight and pick it up if you want to. What I was going to show you before I saw the dot tool or the dot thing, what I was going to show you was that you can take and you could stipple with this a little bit and you could make like a texture if you wanted to highlight with that. Maybe that's a little bit weird. So you could do this as your base and then you could give it some other texture. I don't like that, so I'll get rid of it. Remembering that that is your fingers are your best, um, second best erasers. Paint is your first best, but your fingers are definitely great erasers. They make great tools. So I'm going to pick up my red, bring the stencil back down. And I love that dot tool. All right, we're going to do another coat of red. <clears throat> What I like about working on something a little bit bigger is that by the time you get to one place or the other, you're ready to, um, your stuff is dry. Okay, so we're just gonna swirl. How many of you are swirlers? How many of you are stipplers? It's a free world. There's all the ways to paint in the world, right? How many of you are base coaters? Oh my goodness, I used to base coat all this lettering. <sighs> I had no idea what I was missing. Okay, I'm gonna take this away. And we have got the lifeguard done in red here. We've got the um, kind of tealy turquoisey color here and the dots in that. Oh, it would have been cute to do the dots in the turquoise. That would have been fun. Let me grab my stencil back. Yep, this one is, uh, I'm going to show you how to do the highlighting on the lifeguard. And then I'll show you how to use the second part of the stencil. Okay, so we are almost kind of coming on to the end here. Make sure you're like, sharing, and commenting. And then we have a wonderful YouTube channel. Um, I don't know about you, but I find myself going on YouTube for everything. Like, for everything. Like, how to bake bread, how to, you know clean your dog, like whatever the things are, I go on YouTube for all the things. 
Um, if you don't um, subscribe, and I'm not saying like, if you don't subscribe, I'm saying like, if you don't subscribe, um, helpful hint, because I didn't realize this, if you, if you don't subscribe, then you get lost. Like all of your stuff, you can't, like if you go on there for everything, then it all blends together and you can't find what you were looking for. So say you like this sign, you order the stencil, you wanna watch it again. Well, but then it's been, you know, a week since you saw it and then you come back to it, but now you've looked up a hundred other things. It's easy to get lost. So if you subscribe, then it will show you, you can go to your subscribe channels. And then if you um, ring the bell, then it will tell you when we have new stuff up so that you can watch. Okay, we're gonna take red and red is interesting to highlight with. That's why I wanna show you. If I mix red and white, what do we get? We get pink, right? So nice pink color, yay, I don't want that done in pink. So if I pull out a corally color, ooh, this coral, hmm, take them both out. Okay, so shaky, shaky, shaky. And <clears throat> if you take out something with just a little bit of yellow in it, which is what this is, it's, um, ooh, my cup just goes perfectly with it, doesn't it? Such summer colors, I love it. What's your favorite summer color? I think mine, I think mine might be this coral color. I think I'm, I'm digging this. Okay, so we're gonna take our brush, we're gonna mix our red, we're gonna pick up, I'm gonna start with the darker, see how dark we get. And flip that over, pick up just maybe more of that. Mm, maybe a touch of that. So notice now I'm dirty brush. So I had the dark, I went into the medium, and now I'm in the light. Okay, we'll pick our glasses up, brush off that hair, and then we just highlight right through the middle. What are you doing? I picked up my, I think my paper towels. Hey, this is a really, really good point. Okay, so I'm currently uncertain where these paper towels come from, came from, but um, they are picking up the lint from the paper towel and it is depositing it on my painting. So when you get them, the bounty is really, really awesome. Um, I've never had a problem with that. So um, you wanna watch for that. That's what was just happening. I was like, why is that? Um, and then the way that you can get rid of that is just to kind of flick it off before you apply it. Anyway, so when we look at this on here, you can see that it doesn't look pink, okay? And then I can put it back down. I can pick up a teeny bit of white and hopefully now I'm a peachy color, okay? And so I can just make that highlight just a little bit stronger right through the middle and it doesn't read pink. Okay, and those of you who already own our dome brushes, if you wouldn't mind like letting people know in the chat um, what you like about them, because I think that's, I think the power of all this like social media and videos online and stuff like that is that we educate each other. Um, it is so, it's, it's so easy to trust other people that are doing the same thing as you when they're like, oh my God, this was terrible, or this was great, or use it when this is happening. It just gives you that user base. I think it's wonderful. Okay, so oh, one more thing. We gotta do the second part. Okay, so those of you who know me, uh, a beer maybe when we're painting a wall, but we're definitely gonna be a wine girl. What's in your sippy cup right now? Mine has tea, but not for long. All right, so the way that this works, at Studio R12, what we do is we etch, I don't know if you can see it, I'll kind of flash it in the light. We etch the letters that are near what you're going to be um, painting so that you can line it up so you know where to put it. So maybe it's not lining up with my board right now, but I know it will line up with my letters and it will be straight. I don't know if you've ever tried to paint something straight on a board that you couldn't figure it out. Ugh, it's it's a sad, sad, sad thing. All right, so we are, I think, pretty straight. I'm gonna tape in two places, always. 
Now, you know I'll say always, and then I'm gonna be the biggest rule breaker and I'll like change my mind in a minute. Mostly, that's what we'll say. Okay, and then the wine word is going to be in the aqua color or the turquoise or the teal, whichever color it is. I don't know, those of you who've been watching these for a while, you know that I'm struggling with my, the names of my, my turquoise tealy colors. Okay, I'm gonna shake this up. I think this one might lean a little bit more towards the aqua. Did you see right here on my um, palette that there's clear medium right there and you can see that it's clearly not formed together. Um, paint just separates as it sits. Um, there's a binder in there that turns to plastic and there's pigments and there's all these things. So that's why we shake our paints. And paint, if you didn't know this, oxidizes when it dries. It's actually air makes paint oxidize and that makes it dry. So that's how it dries. So if your paint, that's why it's important that you don't leave your paint bottles open because if your paint bottle is open, then the air gets in and then it oxidizes and then you end up with hard paint and you waste. So um, that is why you keep your paint bottles closed. All right, get some of this color and then we've got that lined up and on we go with our swirling. When you're using, selecting your paint brushes, you wanna use a bigger brush for bigger areas. And little brushes for littler areas. And most of these will cover with two coats. Um, the red is gonna do a really good cover with three coats. Okay, so make sure that if you are coming in late that you catch us tonight and remember that we're doing our drawings. So I'm reminding you right now so you can quickly like and share. Um, we have a grand prize drawing for $30 shopping spree and a set of brushes for tonight at nine and today right now. Um, and then don't forget, you have to come back tomorrow morning to Facebook. Um, if you're catching us on YouTube, ignore all this stuff. Um, the content's the same, but um, if you're catching us on YouTube, then obviously that's not now, but you can go to Facebook and you can go and see our lives on Tuesdays. And then if you're on Facebook, then you come tomorrow morning and you check back in on our page to see if you won. And then you give us your address so we can ship you prizes. Okay, so we'll do this. Oh, and there's one more thing I wanna show you. I have so much, I'm always like, wait, we could do this, we could do this, there's so many things. So I try to make them full of all the information, but I get kind of a little around myself sometimes. Years and years and years ago, so I'm a self-taught painter. Years ago, I had to figure out how to do all this by myself. So anytime I could get around anybody that would tell me something, I was all about it. So I, I, I feel it, yeah, I feel it, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take this away and show you something so cool, you're gonna love it. All right, so move this stuff. We have figured out some storage for stencils. Okay, so. We have found the disc journals and they are these magical little disky things that you can pop into your stencils if you punch a hole and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But look at how amazing that is to organize a pile of stencils. And then you can sort through them and find things like, I own a stencil company and I cannot tell you what a dump the top of my studio was. I had like every stencil I'd used for a year up there. They were falling on the floor, caving in and all. I couldn't figure out how to organize them. And this was at my home studio. And so finally we came up with this idea. So I've got these organized. These are like um, the pattern stencils. These are like just everyday things that I've done but you don't wanna throw a stencil away because like you might need the word coffee for a sign. You might need market for a sign. You know, like you don't wanna throw these away because they're still usable. You can reuse these like dozens of times. So you might need a little sprig of greenery. Um, this one belongs in the other book. <laughs> and then this is a really good point. Uh, make sure that you remove your tape off of your stencils um, when you use them so they don't stick to the one underneath. I don't know if you saw how that, that was just sticking on there. Okay, get rid of that. And then this one I have our banding stencils in this. So you can keep them separate, but what I like about them is they stack and they're really quite 
Like they do, um, let me do it this way. Like they're very, very durable. And then when you want to use a stencil, you just pop it out. And then when you want to put it back, use your glasses. Um, you just pop them right into those little rings have a little inside rib right there. So you just pop them right back in. I think this is killer. Now here for our studio right here, we use these um, S hook, J hooks, um, whatever you're calling them. It looks kind of like a C to me. Um, and then we number things um, like so, so that we know what number it is and we put them in numerical order so we can find them because we know what their numbers are. And also these stack really, really, really nicely. And you could tell if you color coded them, you could tell like the red ones are my tools. The, you know, purple is every day. Green is, you know, background pattern stencils. So the way that you build it, and these are the um, discs. They come in all colors and sizes. They have big ones, little ones, these little crowns punched in there, blue, all the colors. There's a million colors. Um, but I just got a big box because I knew I'd want a whole ton of them. And this is the punch. And this is um, one of the links, one of the um, Amazon affiliate links. And I think I'll do this stencil right here. This is a really good example of a stencil that probably wouldn't work as good because it's so darn long. Um, but if you have long ones, you could um, just put all your long ones together. So you put that in the middle and you can decide. Um, it shows you where, it shows you where center is. It shows you different um, markings and it shows you where your holes are gonna be. So just pop that in there and then you just punch. Okay, and then that's the pattern that it makes. And it's just like a little thumbtack looking thing, okay? And then that can just pop right on in there if this was the book that I wanted to put it in. And now my stencils are organized like that. Isn't that just a dilly dally wonderful thing? So, and I guess it works fine as long as you have a long space to pop this into. You know, this one to me would be a really good candidate for, um, for putting on a hook, on a hanging thing. All right, so that's what that is. And I am also, okay, we've got our finished stencil. And I wanted to show you, so you're gonna be outside with this, right? Um, and you are going to want to protect your stencil because, or not your stencil, your board. And the sun is brutal in Southeast Ohio. I don't know if it's brutal where you are, but um, if your sun is brutal, let me know. And I don't mean the kind you gave birth to. Okay, so we've got um, Duraclear matte varnish from DecoArt. Um, what I like about this is a polyurethane and um, it's matte finish, so it's going to be um, super flat, like it's not gonna make shiny stuff. I don't know if you've ever put shiny varnish on something that goes outside, but it's, it's a terrible thing because it um, reflects the sun and then you can't read the art. So I always shake mine up. A lot of people are like, roll it, but I feel like I'd be here forever, so I don't. So we put that out on our palette. One of the fastest and easiest ways to get your varnish on your stencil is with a little sponge. And these come in this like collection so you can do your background effects and stuff like that. There's actually two of these ones in there. And I wet, this is dirty water, but I think it's not very dirty, I'm hoping. Um, I wet this, squeeze it out, and then I pick up my varnish with the sponge and this is the fastest way you will ever varnish. It is the smoothest way you will ever varnish. And then you can do a couple of coats after it dries. And you know what? This is the first time I didn't do sanding as my cardio. I think it's been, I don't know if I've ever done a video that I didn't sand, sand, sand. All right, and there you're varnished. Isn't that fancy? And then you can, how many of you, Hippie Noodle is going right now. Um, you can also do your edges really easily this way. Just one swipe and you're done. Smooth it because I had a little bit of water. It's not drying really fast. And then if I was doing this for um, my outside, I would do the back as well, but you'll wait till you're done and dry and then flip it over, do the back, get that done and dry, do another coat and just repeat for, I'd say two or three coats will make you nice and sunproof. This washes out with water, do not use soap. And then once again, I'll just pop that in there and kind of get it sunk a little bit so it doesn't dry. And I think 
that's all of our stuff. I hope that you had so much fun. Oh, I promise, I promised to spit on you. Not really. Okay, I promised you a secret. I'm so glad I glanced over there. Let me get, uh, I'm gonna do one of these dry ones. Okay, here's the secret to using command strips. Okay, we hang about a jillion signs, um, sometimes a week. Um, so number one, this is I think the 13 pounds. Um, we cut them into little one inch things. Okay, so you don't need like 18 inches of command strips to hang something unless you're just gonna do like one in the middle. Okay, so when you flip it over, depending on how heavy or how big my sign is, that'll just depend on what I do. You peel off the little thingies. Okay, and this is what I never knew about command strips when I started this. You want this piece, this piece actually goes on the wall, so I'm gonna swap that out. I'm just having a hard time finding the other ones, hang on. I think I picked out all of the ones for the walls. So the ones that are not with the pull tab, because that's the one that you pull to release off of the wall, then you put those on. Pardon me while I get these stuck. Okay, I'll just do two corners. You can do all four. We usually do all four corners. Okay, but the number one problem with command strips is lining them up and stuff. So what you do with these is you just pre-put them on your Velcro and you get yourself, well, you actually shouldn't take the little peely thing off just yet. You get yourself a level and you come over to your wall and you get it positioned where you like it and pop. And ta-da, presto. So I hope that you had a great time. Join us next Tuesday and then make sure you like, share, and comment and we'll see you later. Thanks.